I tried to be brave, but I hid in the dark. I sat in the cave and I prayed for a spark to light up all the pain that remained in my heart. And the rain kept falling down on the roof of the church where I cried. I could hear all the laughter and love, and I tried to get up and get out. But a part of me died, and the rain kept falling down. I'm scared if I open myself to be known, I'll be seen and despised and be left all alone. And I'm stuck in this tomb, and you won't move the stone. And the rain keeps falling Somewhere the sun is light in the sky I'm dying in North Carolina And I can't believe there's an end to the season of night And the rain keeps falling down My children are there, and they love me in spite of the shadow I know that they see in my eyes, and the rain keeps falling. I'm so tired of this game of these songs on the road. I'm already ashamed of the line I just wrote. It's true, and it feels like I can't sing a note, and the rain. Death will give way to a birth, and the rain keeps falling down on the soil where the sorrow is laid, and the secret of life is igniting the grave, and I'm dying to live, but I'm learning to wait, and the rain is falling. song I'm so tired and I'm always so wrong help me be brave tonight Jesus please help me out of this cave tonight I've been calling and calling Jesus Jesus if your rain keeps on falling I've been calling and calling but this rain just keeps falling, falling. Is it you? Is it you? Is it true? Is it you? 
Blessings on this second Sunday of Advent as we anticipate the birth of Jesus Christ coming into the world. Good morning, my name is Reverend J.J. Whitney and I want to welcome you to the gathering here at First United Methodist Church of downtown Bentonville. We're so glad that you have joined us this morning for worship. If you are joining us for the first time, if you're a guest this morning, a special welcome to you. Please fill out the Connect card that you'll find in the comments or online on our webpage, and we'll be in touch with you this week. We continue the season of Advent here at our church. Next week, join us for a special Sunday where we tell the story of Jesus through scripture and song. Join us at 9 o'clock for songs and stories at the gathering and for lessons and carols at 11 o'clock at our traditional service. We continue to study Incarnation by Adam Hamilton for our Advent Bible study, and there's lots of ways for you to connect with us this week. As our pastors and our staff and laity lead us in this study, just contact the church office or, or go to our webpage for more information. And we also continue this season of giving through our personal care drive at the 2nd Street Pantry and our clothing drive at R.E. Baker School. We want to continue to give in these ways. You can drop them off at the church or go online and have them directly mailed to us at the church or to the school. We invite you to give during this season of generosity. As we continue in worship, let us go to God in prayer. Would you pray with me? Oh, holy God, here we are in the darkest days of the year, but we see that the light is coming into the world, and we remember the light shines in the darkness and the darkness does not overcome it and so as we continue to worship you we bring our prayers we bring our praise to you this morning we go to your holy word we offer ourselves to you in song may we continue to bear the light of christ for each other and we pray this as we continue this season of Advent and watching and expecting the promise of the Savior coming into the world. We pray this in the name of Emmanuel, God with us. Amen. Born my people to deliver Born a child and yet a king Born to reign in us forever Now thy gracious kingdom reign By thine own eternal spirit Ruling all our hearts alone By thine all-sufficient grows in me, I come in the peace of wild things, who do not task their lives will for thy of grief. I come into the presence of still water. We think of the 23rd Psalm. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. When everything feels hopeless, when we feel as dead as the dry bones in Ezekiel's valley, God calls us away from the workaday world. God calls us to breathe in the holy breath of peace. When we light the candle of peace, we breathe in the one who restores us. Whatever we face in life, God's spirit of peace will dwell within us.
come to God, how shall we prepare your way? How might we announce your coming? How might we live to make your coming plain? How will we think, speak, and act this day as messengers of grace so those who yearn may hope and those who sit in darkness and the shadow of death may rejoice? How do you enable us to live this gospel? What path are you making in our hearts? How are you preparing your way in each of us? 
Oh God, let us see, let us hear, let us trust, and let us follow you. We ask these things in your Son's most holy, holy name, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Amen. Our scripture this morning comes from the book of 2 Peter, chapter 3, verses 8 through 15. Hear the good news. But do not ignore this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like one day. The Lord is not slow about his promise, as some think of slowness, but is patient with you, not wanting any to perish, but all to come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a loud noise, and the elements will be dissolved with fire, and the earth and everything that is done on it will be disclosed. Since all these things are to be dissolved in this way, what sort of person ought you to be in leading lives of holiness and godliness, waiting for and hasting the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be set ablaze and dissolved, and the elements will melt with fire? But in accordance with his promise, we wait for new heavens and a new earth where righteousness is at home. Therefore, beloved, while you are waiting for these things, strive to be found by him at peace without spot or blemish and regard the patience of our Lord as salvation. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Good morning. I'd like to add my welcome to Reverend JJ on this morning. So glad to be with you on this morning um, to share in this word of God on this second week of Advent, in which this week represents peace. Let us pray. Oh, holy God, we thank you for this day, this moment. Lord God, we ask that you just clear the slate, clear our minds, clear our distractions. We pray for a fresh, renewing word on this morning that reminds us of the peace that your Son, Jesus Christ, brings in this Advent season. It is in your Son, Christ, we pray. Amen. What would life be if we did not have a world of fairy tales? Fairy tales are a part of our childhood lives, and a lot of us are still living in these fairy tale dreams. Fairy tales. What is your favorite fairy tale? We have so many. We have so many um, childhood ones like Three Little Bears. Huff and I puff and I blow your house down. We we love these fairy tales. We love Cinderella. We love Beauty and the Beast. We love all these various stories. And this season of Advent is kind of sort of convoluted of a fairy tale itself. In some kind of way, we've trickled in these ideas of a fairy tale. Until and into this Advent story. We, we love to talk about this little baby Jesus. It, it brings something, it brings warmness into our hearts. And a good thing about a fairy tale is that it has something called the very end and the very beginning, once upon a time. You remember hearing those words? We just like, you know, as a kid, we was like, oh my God. And then at the end of the fairy tale is something that has in most of them, and they lived happily ever after. We love a fairy tale. What is your favorite tale? Write those in the comments and we'll look at those a little bit later. But the problem with a fairy tale is that it's not real. It's not real. It's a manifestation, as Sigmund Freud says, and other psychologists in the 20th century says that fairy tales in their, in their very nature are manifestations of universal fears and desires. Fairy tales are not real. 
But we find ourselves in 2 Peter, and 2 Peter reminds us of, of what's going on, a problem with these mockers, these scoffers are coming through and, and says to these people, um, where is Jesus? Where is Jesus? Where is he coming? When is he coming? And Peter reminds them, and we remind them today, is that sometimes we need to be reminded of the very things that are true. Because the story of Jesus is not a myth, is not a fairy tale, but is rooted in the promises of God. And Peter reminds them as, as he is on his deathbed, as, as aging has come and is imminent of his death, and he says, I'm writing this so I am able to stir up in you a sincere mind by way of reminder. And today we need a staring up, a staring up a reminder of what we know to be true. The promises of God. And he reminds them that in the in second chapter of first Peter, second Peter rather, He's reminding them that this is not some myth that we sat around and came up with. It's not a myth that we sat around and came up with. But in fact, these things that we tell you, these prophecies, these things we saw with our own eyes, we witnessed Jesus' transfiguration. We, we heard the voice of God come down and says, this is my beloved child whom I love. We saw all these things. This is real. It's not a fairy tale. It's not a myth. But these are the experiences of the promises of God. And he reminds them that these, what I'm telling you and what we have passed down to you are promises that have been going on from our prophets and, and throughout history. And a prophet itself is, is the one who comes in the name of the Lord sharing the very nature, the very heart of what God cares about. And oftentimes the prophets themselves are grieving because of the word that God has provided in them because it is so powerful that it is something that they themselves also are communicating, but that they themselves actually believe. And the prophets are always coming around saying the good news, but also says, repent or judgment is coming. And for a lot of us, that is a gloomy story. That's not the fairy tale that we want to believe because fairy tales have good endings, right? But Peter reminds them that these are the things that have been passed down. And the very things that you say, you ask about, where is Jesus? He's not coming because time has passed. And the ancestors had passed away, and Jesus was, re, was, was supposed to come back immediately. Immediately, Jesus was to come back. And this time began to come and go. The question began to be asked, where is Jesus? He must not be coming back because the world is still going on. The world is still going on. It always has been going on since the beginning of time. And, and Peter says, wait a minute. Yes, those things are true. But the very thing you're talking about, the word, the God spoke the word and the creation became to be. He says, for when they maintain this, escapes their notice that by the word of God, the heavens existed long ago and the earth was formed out of water and by water, through which the world at that time was destroyed, being flooded with water. But he tells them also, don't be distracted by this very fact. Do not let this one promise escape your notice. Don't forget that the promises of God are indeed true. And we find ourselves in a similar situation. Time has passed on, and it keeps going. And so much of so is that over time, like the second coming is not even preached during Advent. It's so far out of our, our thought process that we don't necessarily even have it in our thought process. But Peter is reminding them that this is part of our tradition, 
is a part of God's word. And because God has made the promises, Hebrew, the writer of Hebrew tells us, because God has made the promises, God is reliable and trustworthy. And the things that Peter's reminding them in the second letter is that all the things they've already heard, this is an oral tradition at this point. This, they're gathering around and they're sharing these oral traditions and of history, of things to pass. And what Peter is saying is not anything new. The prophets have been sharing this. And he reminds us that the prophets themselves are not just showing and sharing the things that they desire, but the interpretation of the prophecies come from God's will, God's promises. God's promises are true. And he tells them that just because time has passed, you know, don't, don't, don't grow weary in your waiting. Don't be like the scoffers and the mockers begin to believe this heresy in a sense that Jesus is coming back. And because Peter is reminding them, go back to your knowledge, the knowledge of God, he reminds them that you have been given this gift of faith. Just go back to this knowledge of God. It's already been given to you. It's been given because God has called you to be in Koinonia with Christ Jesus. In fact, this, this grace has been multiplied in you. This knowledge of God has been multiplied in you. And that's some good news for us today because if we just remember the promises of God, we're reminded when times get rough, when times begin to doubt, and then when life gets hard, when, when the things that God has told us is not passed, and those prayers that we have prayed and we were asking and waiting for God to come in our lives, we're reminded that we can stand still because the promises of God are true. And, and Peter reminds them that seeing this, that you have been given everything you need that's by, by God's divine power. That God has given you everything you need in this life to be all that you can be, to, to continue to go on when life gets hard, and also to live a life of godliness. This is God's gift to us. But oh, if we just believe in the knowledge of God. And somewhere in this good, good news, John reminds us that in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and then Jesus came in the, in the Word, made flesh, so that we could see light and not live in darkness. That we don't have to create our own new ending to this narrative of Jesus Christ's story of redemption for life. We don't have to create them and live in this fairy tale of an ending because it becomes uncomfortable to us. Some, somewhere, somewhere, the second coming, coming is uncomfortable for us. It becomes a fairy tale ending for us. You know why? Because fairy tales are supposed to be good endings of happy ever after. But if we remember the knowledge of God and knowing that this is the promises that God has made for us, that, that God will create a new heaven and a new earth. And what Peter's reminding us, let's go back to Isaiah. And Isaiah, he, he's the, the first one who begins to talk about God has created a new thing. He's created a new earth and a new heaven. We don't have to be afraid. We don't have to, to think about this story of the second coming as a, a fairy tale ending because it is. It seems like to be when we talk about the, the sun beginning to not shine and the moon losing its functions and the earth shattering and all these different things. Fairy tales are manifestations of, of universal desires and fears, and we all want to have a happy ending. But I'm so glad that this story of redemption is a happy ever after ending. Because Peter reminds us that although there is going to be a burning of what we know to be, we want this world to burn away. We want our lack of turning towards God to burn away because that gives rise to something new that we have never, ever seen before. And David reminds us in this great transferring of words over time that peace and righteousness kiss. And that in this new heaven, new earth, that righteousness is looking down upon us. 
I don't know about you, I'm ready for that day when we can have no more tears and no more crying and no more disappointments and no more sickness and no more death. The peace that God provides us is in, not in a fairy tale, but in the trueness of God's word and promises to us. And that is peace. But Peter says here, he reminds them, asks the questions, but while you're waiting for Jesus to come back, how might you be in the world? And yes, Jesus is coming back, and yes, Jesus has come, but we're reminded in this, in this Peter's word on today that we have been given all that we need for this life and to be godly. But if we all only remember of God's knowledge for us, that God has already called us into being, into partnership in this divine nature of God. And that, what that means for us is we come to this table that we believe that this nourishment of, of the bread and wine for us allows us to be Christ in the world. While we wait, we proclaim that Christ has died, Christ has risen, and Christ will come again, and that we are renewed by the Holy Spirit. And it reminds us that the God, that Jesus is coming every single day through our sanctification, through us as we respond to the Holy Spirit that's poured on us generously every single day as we wake up and say, good morning, Grace. That's what we do while we wait on Christ to come and final victory. So then we don't have to shy away from the uncomfortable things about the end times. But we, we wait and hasten for this day to come because we then know that God who makes the promises is trustworthy and that this world that God has created for us, that God has created a new thing for us so we can dwell in this eternal bliss. And that is peace, my friends. Amen. On this morning, we've given an opportunity to reflect on what it means to wait while Christ comes again. We've been reminded of the knowledge of God does not allow for us to dwell in this fictitious world that we find so comfortable but invites us in to be participants in this divine nature that allows us to remind us that we've been getting everything we need for this life to stand fast in this hastening of the Lord to come. So I don't know where you are this morning. Maybe you are, you are grappling. Maybe you are, have your own doubts. And maybe God is calling you this morning to join a church family where you can answer these questions with others just like yourself. We would love to have you come join us so we can love on you and that we can grow in Christ together. And the way you can do that is by connecting with us through a connect card, and we will be in touch with you on this week. Another way for you to be a part of our community and to, to, to be participants of the kingdom to come is to give through your tithe and your offering. And as Reverend J.J. said earlier, it's a season of generosity, and we have plenty of ways for you to, to share God's love through um, purchasing um, items for R.E. Baker, our community partners, right across the street from us, or by sending in um, Amazon cars to the church so we can make the purchases for you, but also giving to our Second Street Pantry the items that are available on our Facebook page and also on our website. Let us pray. Oh God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the stirring up reminder of the knowledge of you, O oh God, is the promises that we desire and that we need. We pray, O oh Lord, that this is a day in which we can stand firm and we can stay in stand in confidence and removing the fear of what it means for you to come again. And we pray, O oh Lord, that you bless these tithes and our offering. That way we can begin to be a bliss of what the kingdom is to be. In Christ we pray. Amen.
coming in on today to worship with us. Your presence was felt, and we just love for you to continue to um, share this video with your friends and your family. But also, it's a time for us to come to Christ's table. I believe as we come to Christ's table that Christ meets us here and that Christ nourishes us so that we can be Christ in the world. So we invite you to go ahead and grab your, what you have for communion and join me at Christ's table. The Lord be with you, and also with you. It is a right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you. Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth, you formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant, to be our sovereign God and spoke to us through your prophets. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ, whom you sent to, in the fullness of time to be the light to the nations. You scatter the proud and the imaginations of their hearts and have mercy on those who fear you from generation to generation. You put down the mighty from their thrones and exalt those of low degree. You fill the hunger with good things, and the rich you send empty away. Your son came among us as a servant.